So I, I got a mystery virus. I never knew what it was that triggered post, post-viral syndrome. Had initially about six weeks in bed, just so overwhelmingly fatigued and in so much pain and such bad brain fog. I would sweat. I'd get a lot of sweats too. I had a lot of nerve pain. I had such swollen lymph nodes in my tummy, I, all, all through my body, but particularly my tummy. I could barely eat. I lost in kilos in three months. Like it was wow. crazy. And I spent pretty much six months just being incredibly sick and then then started about a year of just pushing and crashing and pushing and crashing and no one could help me it was so awful the doctors would just be like oh it's nothing we can really do I remember one of them actually saying to her be like well you might get better but you might not Mm. it's like I'm I'm 26 years old you can't tell me that Mm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another success interview at CFS Health. My name is Toby Morrison, the founder of CFS Health. And on the other end, we have Susie McKenzie, who is coming on to share her recovery story from chronic fatigue syndrome. It's pretty damn incredible. I've known Susie for a, for a long time now, actually, almost, almost eight, nine years now, maybe even 10. And so it's so, I'm getting chills down my spine because I saw an Instagram reel pop up on our on our CFS health page the other day and I clicked on it and it was Suze McKenzie. And I go, Oh, I remember, I remember Suze McKenzie. I've got a really good memory. And it was this reel of basically this woman who, you know, went through these stages of recovery and is now out the other end. And sure enough, it was Susie McKenzie who did our original OG program, you know, the CFS health recovery program, which is pretty wild. And so I reached out to her and you said, yes, you, you're up for an interview. So I just want to thank you for being here because, you know, not everyone, you know, jumps on and shares their story. They just kind of move on. And so, you know, I really appreciate you giving back as well. So thanks for, thanks for being here. Oh, you're very welcome, Tony. I, um, I know how important hope was when I was sick. So if I can just give that to one other person, that's awesome. Yeah, you're amazing. Let's, let's go back. Let's rewind the clock a little bit. You mentioned before off air that you were 26 when you first got diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. And it wasn't until mm-hmm. kind of 18 months in your journey that you found proper help. And I'd love to know kind of like, you know, what led to you getting CFS and and share that part. Yeah. So I, I got a mystery virus. I never knew what it was that triggered post, post-viral syndrome. Mm-hmm. But in hindsight... I had not been looking after myself. I'd been pretty stressed, pretty anxious and burning the candle at both ends. I didn't really know how to rest. I was very active, probably over-exercising as a way to deal with the anxiety. And and I had got sick a lot in the sort of year before, but I just kept pushing. And then I went to Germany for work and came back and just thought I was jet lagged. And then was like, geez, this is, this isn't jet lag. And I, had initially about six weeks in bed, just just so overwhelmingly fatigued and in so much pain and such bad brain fog. But I was very lucky. My mum's a nurse and she knows how the medical world works and she got me in to see the right doctors and I ended up seeing an infectious diseases physician who tested me for everything it could be and then came back negative for everything. So we said it was chronic fatigue. Wow. And what, what, apart from the exhaustion and the brain fog and the pain, was there any other main symptoms? Those three are really common for most people. Yeah, they were the big three, but I would sweat. I'd get a lot of sweats too. I had a lot of nerve pain. To be honest, a lot of it's a blur, Toby. It was so intense and so awful. Mm. I'm trying to think what my other symptoms. Oh, actually... I had such swollen lymph nodes in my tummy, all all through my body, but particularly my tummy, I could barely eat. I lost 10 kilos in three months. Like it was crazy. Yeah. And so you went from, because you were, were you writing books, like editing books, like you were a full-time? Yeah, I was was working full-time for a magazine, a monthly magazine, doing writing and editing. And yeah, my whole life, and I was doing my master's at the same time and my life just got ripped out from underneath me. I had to quit my job, had to move home. Luckily I had that option, but it wasn't True. what I wanted to do. No. Quit uni and I spent pretty much six months just being incredibly sick and then then started about a year of just pushing and crashing and pushing and crashing and no one could help me. It was so awful. The doctors would just be like, 
oh, it's something we can really do. I remember one of them actually saying to her, be like, well, you might get better, but you might not. Mm. It's like, I'm, I'm 26 years old. You can't tell me that. Mm. Like, Especially when you're feeling horrible. Like, yeah. And especially when there's no practical help. <clears throat> so you're feeling horrible. There's no practical help. And there's this gap in the yeah. world. Like, it's kind of it, like, I would feel, I would imagine those six months for you would have been like just so depressing. Like, was it? They, they really were, Sophie. I, I certainly had very low, low moments. And, yeah. and throughout four and a half years of it, certainly had moments of going like, if this doesn't get better, like this mm. is, I can't live like this. And, no. and yeah, it was, you were really just, well, you know what it's like. You just cut adrift. Like they just don't help you. And mm. you're just like, well, what? You can't just not help me. <laughs> I used to have a life. You've just taken it away from me. Like it was, mm. yeah, it was awful. And I think also horrible. like that, the doctor situation is tough too, because like we get brought up kind of being told that when you're sick you go to the doctors and so you keep trying the same freaking thing for so long and it's like Mm -hmm. ah like when am I going to find someone who can actually help me yeah and I had a very compassionate doctor who was very nice to me and Mm, and gave me a script for antidepressants and a script for nerve pain and but he couldn't help he did tell me to do graded exercise but didn't explain it so I did it wrong and wrongly prescribed yeah so it really wasn't until I found you guys that I was like, oh, you guys actually understand what's going on with me. Mm. I don't have to justify it. And you've got some practical ways to help me. Mm. I was so excited. When I stumbled across you online. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> now tell us how you found us because this is a long time ago. This isn't like, you know, last week or yeah. you know, last year. Yeah, This was about 10 years ago, yeah. maybe, no, eight years ago. And... I had, because I was a writer before I got sick, it's something I tried to keep doing and, and I wrote a blog. I wrote a blog called A Snoozy Life and someone commented on one of the early posts and on it saying they liked my photos or something fairly benign and I clicked on their profile and went to their blog. They were in the UK and I read everything they'd written. I'd never read anything that they identified with like this, so I was very excited and then she put up these videos, these YouTube videos of, of Toby, of oh, you. Right. And I was like, oh, what's this? Like this guy, and I heard your Aussie accent and was like, no, he's Australian. And and it turns out you were an hour down the road from me. So yeah. I shot off a excited email to you being like, oh, my God, please help me. And you, can't, you were like, just chill, just chill. Sounds, sounds like <laughs> me. Long- what? All right, cool. So you, you've been kind of having a crap time for a year and a half you tried lots of diff what did you what did you try up until this point like oh, externally just give us a run like the list yeah i boiled up horrible chinese herbs in the oh, pot yeah. and drank acupuncture chiropractor diet fully resting fully pushing myself just drug like different medications i just a wonder i didn't rattle i took so many vitamins mm. um yeah you name it i tried it mm. Yeah, okay, that's I think everyone everyone will relate to that. And, okay, so you find CFS Health, you're super excited. Toby Morrison says, Calm your farm. I don't actually <laughs> know that, but probably something along those lines. Just relax. Like you know. what what was it like initially? Like when you first came in and you got help, like was mm-hmm. was there a reality check of like, okay, that you know, I have to knuckle down and do some things here, or was it just nice to go, oh, okay, like there's some things I can do? Like, I think it was a, a combo. It was the solidarity was just phenomenal to just mm. to just work with you and work with Raya and be like, yeah. let's get it. I don't have to waste any of my limited energy reserves explaining this. Mm. Um, I think you both told me. You wouldn't fix me straight away, which isn't what I wanted to hear. I wanted to. You wanted to. You wanted to get better now. Yeah. So that that took a long time. That acceptance, and I found that very hard. But yeah, yeah you just you gave me practical things to do. That was just just gave me something to hold on to. To be like, oh, thank God, I can do something. Though. That's right. Yeah. And at that point, I think your capacity wasn't super high. And I think a lot of people struggle with this where their capacity isn't that high, but they kind of just 
up until getting help, they don't think they can do anything. And I actually think it's really powerful when you're at a lower capacity to actually go, I can do some things. And I think that actually really flips the entire day on its head. Do you remember, I mean, it's so long ago, but do you remember any kind of like the little things that we did at the start to take? Yeah, I remember yoga in bed. Mm, Restorative movement in bed. Yeah, in bed. Like I couldn't, I was really weak. I had no muscle. Yeah. So anytime I tried to do something, I'd just be in pain. So it was like, right, you're just going to do restorative movement in bed. And I was like, oh. Like, and oh, I think I then we were, yeah, and we just sort of made like a routine about the general stuff. Like, you know, I might just be watching TV all day, but let's break it up into TV. Then we're going to get up and have a cup of tea. Then we're going to have yes. another TV. Then we're going to have a rest. And yes. Or even telling me just, just rest for 20 minutes. Don't rest for four hours. Just like just set an alarm and just even those little bits just gave me something to latch on to. Mm. And I think meditation was that was you guys really pushed that to just try to calm that nervous nervous system system. down. That was jangling. Yeah. And I think, oh man, it's so hard. Like, I think like, it's just like the nervous system so wired already. Right. But then having no practical help and no hope, makes that nervous system even worse almost so it's like a double-edged sword in a way it's like it's there's the problem and there's a problem on top of the problem yeah absolutely and that really compounded things you were just like i i I don't know what to get how to get better i don't know how to get better just and even i think you guys taught me about like energy credits and i was just like oh like that was just a light bulb to be like all Mm. right if i'm i'm going to do something that i know is a bit much this is how I can approach it and I remember going to a wedding and talking with Raya about how to go to this wedding and we're all like right you're going to drive to the reception as close as you can get there early so you can get the best part mm. and between on and you're going to go back to your car and you're going to have a sleep mm, have a and then, like we had a whole game plan around how to do it and and yeah I crashed on the other side but nowhere near as badly as if I hadn't had helped you after so. yourself exactly yeah yeah and i yeah. think when i did crash having someone to text and be like oh god like i've overdone it what do i do and yeah and Doing i want three I, things I yeah or even just you know it's okay this is just data like this is this is telling you what you can do and what you can't do it's yeah. such a different way to look ah yeah interesting yeah so we have we have what we call it's called the setback toolkit and basically The first point of the call is to say, hey, it's data. It's like, it's just showing you, you know, yeah, not a big deal. Like, let's not beat yourself up. You're not going back to square one. It can feel like, the problem is it can feel like you're going back to square one. You go, oh, shit. Absolutely. And I think that is the hardest part about chronic fatigue, Toby. It's the the snakes and ladders. Like, Mm. you're like, oh, my God, I'm making progress. I'm making progress. I'm making progress. This is amazing. I'm feeling hopeful. Mm. Go Go to a wedding feel like crap afterwards and then kind of have this all or nothing kind of feelings and expectations yeah. mm. absolutely that was so hard to to navigate and the other really hard part was you know watching everyone else in my life move forward like for four years like 26 to 30 years when I was sick most of my friends met their partners then quite a few of them got married quite a few of them had kids there were promotions people moved overseas like it's a big time in your life mm. I just felt like I was treading water I was just stuck there just going like, I want to be happy for these people but when the hell is it my turn like mm. it's really hard a lot of mind stuff what did you do st- what did you do with that mindset like how did you change your your focus because it because we have a lot of members who go through this now and people in you know in the free community who are just like constantly doing that they're you know all their attention and energy is just wasted on you know it's unfair like what you know like they love their friends and then they feel guilty and bad for feeling that way but mm-hmm. all the attention and focus is taken off themselves what are some, what are some things you know, that that you, that you applied that helped you kind of shift the mindset? Because obviously it changed, you know, like you started to get better and, and you started to really focus on yourself. What were some of the things that helped you with that? I think I think on your online community we had a no venting rule and that, we do, that yes. was really good to know that I couldn't <laughs> go and just have my beauty party. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Lot, 
Mm. Yeah, but I did journal a lot, Toby, and I think that's always helped me. And I would, so I'd have my little rant into my journal, mm. but then I'd pick. Okay, but good. I do so, remember. So you would journal. You would use the journaling as an expression of 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 anger, frustration, whatever the feelings were. You would get that out on paper, and that was your like release almost. Awesome. Because it was wild. I re I reread some of them. Oh God. Um, <laughs> and I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I did. I had to get it out. So I didn't yeah. want to. But I do remember a blog post I wrote called grieving for the past two years and I, I hit two year wow. anniversary mark of being sick and I spent two days just in tears I was just so yeah. I was grieving for two years I didn't get to live how I wanted to so mm. it's a really fine line about having that control of, of like and I'd done cognitive behavioral therapy with a psychologist so I knew about you know the thoughts impacting your feelings and I was you, you did have to be disciplined and a bit regimented but to a point, like you had to let you it out let, somehow. Let it out. No, hundred percent. And I mean, you know, Gemma, one of our mindset coaches, she's amazing. And she it's talked wonderful. about, you know, feeling emotions and letting it all out. But I think that's really cool that you did that. Is your blog post still alive? Like, can people still find yeah. that? Yeah. Can, yeah. Because I'm just thinking like, I think that'd be really helpful for people who are right, like right now in the middle of that feeling of grieving and they just, they need that permission. What's the website they could find it in? So it's called... Uh, www.asnoozylife.com. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a link anyway and put it in, in these show notes, but I think that'd be really cool for people to read that. Yeah. I think it it's was, important. It's a lot, it's really hard emotions you're dealing with and, and no yeah. one really knows other than if you, if you've been there, you don't, you don't understand it. So. Yeah. I just yeah. also didn't think that young people got sick. Toby. Right. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> that until you until old. you experience it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's interesting, like with beliefs, how we can grow up thinking certain things, like, you know, no, nah, only older people get sick, you know. But then we yeah. see people who are as young as you know, ten years old kind of getting long COVID and chronic fatigue syndrome these days. And and older people too, you know, eighty five year olds and everywhere in between. I really like the journaling piece because I think not that's not spoken about that much in in the wider community about how, the importance of like expressing you know like yes positive mindset yes you know mental rehearsal and and you know building those neural pathways that is important along yep. with the physical stuff which i want to get into in a moment because that's what you spend a lot of time doing that you know the baseline and building your building your progress but but no, i, do I also think, think my you know, Sorry, go, you go. go 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 <laughs> I was just going to say, I think writing my blog really helped me because I was a writer already. I was like, I didn't make that most of the time. I did not make that a negative space. I made that as a way to educate my family and my friends about what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then all people around the world started reading it and commenting. And I was like, oh, like, this is cool. And then I was just like, it was a way to show progress and hope. So I was documenting. Mm -hmm. oh my God, I just... I did this weird thing <laughs> on a pin board. I had yellow, red, and green pins. I'm going to be a bit anal about things. So. No, that's good. That's good. We love it. I put a string on each day and I put a, like I put a, a pin as to each day as to where my, like, where my energy felt. Oh, if it cool. was red, it was low. You're yellow. tracking your progress. Yeah. And I'd get a piece of wool, I think, from mum's knitting and make a little graph. Like, wow. because I just, needed evidence that I was getting better so good so, yeah so, so good it was a lot of celebrating Cel a lot of what celebrating, celebrating the little steps that was really important for me why do you think that was important um because it was so slow and so hard to see if you waited for someone else to be like you're so much better they probably wouldn't mm. and so and I needed I needed that confirmation that I was getting better and and making progress and that's probably why i resonated with the physical stuff so much because it was so easy to see see it right. and we used yeah. to track probably something to see. an yeah. overachiever too <laughs> yeah well that, yeah the overachieving thing we'll talk about that as well just like just curious like what were some of the such insignificant wins that you would celebrate at that lower level that most people would think they're insignificant, but they're actually really important. You know, like what what celebrating the small wins look like at the lower level capacity for someone? 
Yeah, good question. Mm. I remember going out to a cafe for the first time since I got like, my parents drove me, mm. but to go and have chocolate in a cafe, I was just so delighted by that. That was just that's a quite really a big milestone. Yeah, it was. I mean, and I remember my brothers are both runners, and they were doing like a trail run thing down on the beach. And I just went and held their jumpers mm. while they ran and held the dog. But I was stoked because I was outside and I was with people. And I remember the first time I drove again. So I didn't drive for six months because mm. I was really so unwell and worried about running off the road. And all the roads around mum and dad were like 100 k's an hour. So the first time I drove, I was whooping for joy. That was that was awesome. <laughs> mm, they're pretty big wins. Did you, did you ever, you know, like ones where it's just like I got out of bed at a set time every day and I'm proud of oh, that. Oh, yeah. I had a rule that I had to be out of bed by midday. I had my pyjamas by midday. That was yeah, my... out of your pyjamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge. And every day I did it, I'd be like, yes, well done. So there's lots of little moments of like, just well done. You've done that. A lot of positive self-talk and what else? Yeah, I, I certainly did celebrate little wins, but it's can't remember them right now well you remember the big ones and and i think that's common you forget the smaller ones that you did along the way but you know i think one thing getting coaching as well and being in that group that private group where the no negative venting i think for you maybe that opened up your world to go wow there's other susies like me yeah yeah you know similar age or or even older but inspiring Mm. well that's how i met Gemma, who's still a wonderful friend of mine friends for life yeah Absolutely. But I remember who else, another girl who works here, Erin, she was slightly ahead of me in her recovery. And she yeah. was in America. Yes. And she just felt about six months ahead of me. And so when she went skiing again, and I love to ski, when she went skiing again, I was like, oh my God, if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And so that was, and she went to a wedding again. I was like, oh my God, she's gone to the wedding. Like, yeah. That was just incredible. Yeah. And you got to do all, you've done all that. Like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll talk about all the milestones in a moment. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the physical stuff that you did. So obviously you'd come in and you'd get help with, you know, your baseline and building. And so like initially, like I think what people don't get how important routine and structure is, mm. especially at yeah. the lower level, because it's so easy to lie in bed all day and feel absolutely yep. shit. And that's what I was doing. Yes. And you're like, why am I getting better? Because you think that resting is going to get you better. And it's like, like you said before, it's like, you know, when we set up your, your, your proper baseline routine for you, it was like, well, you don't need to rest for four hours. You know, it's energy in energy out throughout the day and credits in credits out. So like how important is routine and structure? Like, do you think that actually was the lifeline for you to kind of come back? It was. Yep. Like figuring out my baseline was, total game changer for me or the, the concept it took me bloody forever to find my baseline thank you for sharing that because i think a lot of people get frustrated with that because they they think well like i i've watched the concept i've watched the trainings i i i get the baseline but then they're like they get upset with themselves because they're like oh I, I haven't perfected it you know it's not perfect or yeah, it took me months. yeah thank you yeah. it took me months and then it took, every time it moved it took me weeks no, again figuring so, out weeks yeah yeah because yeah you can do it today but how do you feel the next day that's yeah. the hard part whereas if there was a warning sign flashing today you'd go oh I'll stop like it's all guesswork but yeah that routine for me because I was used to being a busy person quite high achiever person the idea that I just did nothing depressed me hugely mm. so yeah I used to I used to write like I actually, when I looked through those old journals, some of them were just me writing down what I did every day while we tried to figure out that baseline. Yes. Even that was good for me to be like, oh, so you actually got out of bed and I oh, had a phone call there and you listened mm. to that audio book. You had a shower standing up. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, you know, you were doing your daily uh, tracking for periods of time to get the data to go, all right, sweet. This is yeah. good for me. And yeah. And I then feel- when I crashed. Yes. I could look back and see. I'd be like, what? I don't think I did too much. But often it'd be like, you didn't do too much today, mm. but you did this, this, and this in three days in a row. Oh, mm. That middle day to be a rest day. So. Yeah, exactly. And then you built up from that. Movement. You started just doing some light stuff in the bed, obviously, to because that's where you're at. What 
it was a bit of a processing like six nine twelve months of of slowly kind of we start low we think about a graph going upwards of building back up your strength and stamina uh was that what was that like like you know starting with stretching and then and then going into kind of more strength-based restrengthening stuff for your body and what was that like as an experience it was hugely frustrating at first because i was used to playing sport and i was like i played snap cross and i was like what the hell is this? Like, You're like, what? I'm only allowed to do three minutes of stretching a day? Yeah. Yeah. Or well, you want me to do a wall push-up? Like, what? Yeah, wall push-ups. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We got you started on wall push-ups. Yeah. And and because I'd already done yoga and Maria was a yoga teacher, we definitely built that in. And I used to do, I remember starting off with four yoga, po- once I was out of bed, like four yoga poses was all I was allowed to do. Mm. And then I introduced a few. And then a six, but like one, I introduced one every fortnight. Like it there was you go. so slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember too, the doctor had told me about walking and I I was walking, I was trying to walk like a K, like as if I was able to do that. Well, this is the thing I was going to talk about. I think like that frustration that you were having is like, it's crazy, right? Because you're like, you're like, come on, Toby, like wall push-ups? Are you serious? Or, or you know, Raya, only, you're only letting me do three minutes of stretching a day or whatever it was at the start. But the funniest thing is like you weren't doing anything anyway. You know, you were laying in bed all day, but but you were, you, were, you were doing that because you were comparing of like lacrosse and netball and all that other hiking and all that stuff. And you're like, well, if I can't do that, I'll just, it's either that or nothing. Yeah, it's like that yeah. all or nothing tripping up. And the gap is like, no, we just need to get you started here to, to close the gap mm-hmm. up to where you where you want to be. Well, and I don't think I realized how much, like that I'd lost all my muscle either, like from right. lying in bed. Like I was so weak. Yeah. So what I started doing walking, because my parents were on a farm, is so I used to drive down, because they're on a hill, I couldn't walk up the hill, so I'd drive down to the flats. And then I would walk along a fence and I would go one fence post further each week. And I remember trying to explain to my friends like how slow the progress was, and that was how I could get them to understand. I'm like, I'm going a fence post one post, more. yeah, yeah. It's, it's so slow, and it, it did speed up quite quickly, but mm. initially that was. Yeah, you got to really build hard. that and confidence back in your body again, you know. Oh, totally. That was a huge part for me to just be like, you can do this. It's okay. Like you can walk 200 meters. It's fine. Like mm-hmm. and prove to myself. Yeah, you, because there's so much fear because when you've crashed badly mm. and you've spent months in bed, like, you, it's really scary and you feel really vulnerable. Mm, that's right. Yeah, so I feel like the combination or the winning combination for you was was doing what was appropriate, having the routine and structure now for, like, where you're at now, celebrating the small wins and then building that confidence in 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 your brain and your body and that connection too yeah. you know the wall push-ups and and the stretching initially and and the stuff that raised foam rolling foam <laughs> rolling yeah like all of these little things that we were implementing daily was just like to to rebuild that str- strength and stamina in your brain and your body to make the right decisions and move forwards but god it was it's a messy journey like i think people don't i think people think before they go through it themselves and they get to the other end they they kind of have this idea of like i'm here and i'm gonna get there pretty quick once i join or sign up or yeah and you're like no 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 it's this up and down process exactly yeah yeah but i i, I even remember not not understanding toby the energy that was needed for things like I've always been a baker and I yes, once so. I was feeling a little bit better I'd be like oh, I'm gonna make some biscuits and standing in a kitchen for 15 minutes and picking up heavy ingredients if you haven't done it I, yeah yeah that, that's that's like physical movement <laughs> like that's exhausting yeah, that's right. functional daily movement and if you've been in bed for six months like mm. that's gonna feel like a marathon pretty much so I think that education piece was really important too to understand all the different stresses on you on your body like mental fatigue social fatigue physical fatigue like understanding that really helped me too yeah because i think if we don't understand if we don't have the education around it, it's easy it's 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 just easy to get swamped up and consumed by uh, like what the hell's going on whereas you go oh well and you know if you're an introvert let's say you're an introvert at home and you do socializing well even if you're not unwell you're gonna feel drained 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, whereas I was an extrovert. So I was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, you're an extrovert, right? And then and then knowing that there's social fatigue because, you know, there's cognitive overload, there's multiple conversations going, there's more noise, there's more stimulus, and it's just more for yeah. the brain to process, you know. But as you get healthier and stronger, the brain processes things, you know, at a more optimal level. What other things, we'll get to the juicy stuff next in terms of like what, what you've been up to, all the amazing things you've done, but was there anything else that you want to share that was useful for you in terms of like nutrition or mindset or or a certain belief that kind of, you know, that helped yeah. you kind of progress? I had a door in my, my cupboard door in my bedroom, had just these little quotes all over it, most of them from you. <laughs> yeah. So one was, I can, I will, I am. Uh, nice. I used to say, yes. get better, I will get better, I am getting better. Food is fuel was another one. That's so, so funny. I We've really... got these cards here. So we have these <laughs> cards now. Ten years later, we finally developed our own and now we send them to our members. You know, like I stop, over, stop over complicating <laughs> it. But the, the yeah. ones that you just said are actually in here. Oh, that's so cool. And, yeah. Well, because I had no appetite and so I just wanted to eat toast. Like... But I was, so I made a rule that my food had to have three colors. Wow, that's healthy. good. It's so funny. Even to this day, Suze, you'll laugh because I, yeah, you know, I still say, you know, if you think, if you think breakfast is toast, you're, that's not breakfast. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's not counting. We're not counting toast as breakfast. Um, and I had another one. My future will not be fatigue. That was mm. just, I had to read that every day to be like, you will get out of this. Yeah. Baby steps. Um, get, cut yourself slack. This is hard. Yeah. Like I bloody remember them. I read them every day. <laughs> so good. But that especially, I could read them when I was in a crash too. So mm -hmm. I could just see them and be like, um, so you're reframing the whole time. You're kind of just like, yeah, you're releasing all the anger and frustration for the journaling, but then you're still kind of focusing on the things on, on that's, that's helping you reframe and feeling calmer in the moment. Yeah. And I think it really was just, evidence for me again and again see you could do that you know you're not where you want to be but you're not where you were either. yeah so good and and also those wall push-ups then turn into you know they go from a five five to ten and then you all of a sudden you're doing 20 in a row and you're going oh well that's not that hard mm -hmm. so as you were only doing three when you started you know it's like that's a well, yeah what was amazing is i'm jumping forward a bit here i didn't believe i was fully recovered so I was so used to slowly progressing and pacing and protecting my energy that one of my brothers actually said to me, he said, oh, I think you, I think, because I said, oh, I'm not well enough to work full time yet. Like I'm, I'm still, still, and he goes, Suze, you're working three jobs. <laughs> and so I was oh. doing three different part -time jobs and wow. he was like, you are working full time. You're just doing it for three different people, which How is probably more fine. time. And I actually think you're just terrified to, to to admit you're well because you don't want it taken away and I had to in that part I had to actually keep pushing myself to do new things and still even give myself evidence at that point see see like because yeah. I sort of wrapped myself up in cotton wool like yeah that's the integration lifestyle integration phase where yep. you've got to kind of ditch the recovery focus and then mm -hmm. you you build the life focus which you were doing but on the mental side you hadn't fully you know consciously gone Absolutely. all right cool i'm focusing on i'm you know i'm doing three jobs for god's sakes and then you you probably if you if you already assumed to yourself well i'm recovered you probably wouldn't have done the three separate jobs you would have just chosen one full-time job right <laughs> that's yeah. so interesting that it was almost more you know like you were doing yeah. three do yeah oh wow that's so fascinating yeah and I was so scared to do a full-time job. And I, I kind of even stayed in Geelong where my parents are and didn't move back to Melbourne just in case I did, got sick again. Like mm. I was so, and I, I didn't, I was fully recovered. Mm. But I was just, oh, what, what if I need support? Like I was living mm. on my own, but I just needed that safety net there. Well, well, I vaguely remember, if I'm correct, that you moving out of the mum and dad's house into your own apartment was a huge process in and of itself, getting that independence back in yeah because by that point I was 30 I really didn't want to be living at home that's right and I just I was so scared to go and do that and to, to cook for myself and to clean for myself and do all this so I probably moved out before I was fully better like I was yeah. still but that's part of it, right that's part of the the, yeah. the next step like you have to make that decision Absolutely. to 
Yeah, I reckon I was about 29 and or nearly 30 and I was like, oh, this is so scary. And and six months later I was better. Like I knew I was better, but mm. I, it took so long to believe it and trust it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and I think it's just one of those things that you, for three and a half years, there's this recovery focus of this such nuanced approach but then as you get better, you do have to loosen the group and that's where you can socialize more. You can go to the cafes. You can drive around in a hundred, hundred, um, you know, speed roads. And it's just like it, the envelope gets bigger. It opens up, you know, it's like the, the world opens up again, but with that comes life challenges, you know, and I think people don't talk about that enough. We talk about, you know, we've got our a separate kind of next level program called the lifestyle integration program now. So basically when members start to feel better and they're like, they, they don't need to focus on their baseline. They don't. They know their nutrition. They know how to listen to their body. They don't need to, you know, think about any of that stuff anymore. It's like, okay, cool. You're ready to start thinking about life. Like, what are we going to create? What would you like? And and so we kind of help people then deal with life challenges because I think, and you can back this up probably of like, you know, when you're going through recovery, you kind of have this fantasy that once you get better, life's just going to be a dream. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and one, perfect. <laughs> one perfect dream. Like everything's perfect. You feel perfect. You smile. You're never tired. No, you're never <laughs> tired. Exactly. You're never tired. You never feel a bit grumpy. You never feel a bit irritable. You never feel a bit wired. Like there's this idea that, and I think it's just because you're, you, you, you've been sick for a period, a long period of time that you, you, you just fantasize about this whole disney experience but then you get there and then you go oh shit like this is hard life's, like, life's tricky, life's tricky. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah can you talk about like what, what was your experience yeah. with that well i actually remember the same brother saying to me that like, i think you're just normal person tired you your brother your sounds tired. brilliant it's very wise <laughs> shout out shout out to Sue's like, brother <laughs> well done mark he said you're just cfs tired so you're just normal person normal tired. tired and i was yes. like Oh, he's like, and because I remember we went to my cousin's wedding up in New South Wales and we flew up there. It was a big thing. And, and I did feel really tired the next week. He's like, oh, I'm tired too. It was a yes. bloody long flight. Mm. We got drunk. <laughs> of course we're tired. But, mm. so, so good. Yeah, I, This is good. I think too, I think I found really hard too, Toby, rebuilding that life. All I, all I was focused on was, was health. And then I kind of... I, got better and then I was like shit I don't know what I want to do as a job I don't know where I want to live I don't I don't know what I'm doing and I felt very lost so that was that was very hard and I was very lucky I had had met Gemma this awesome chick who had chronic fatigue at the same time as me so we really supported each other through that time you did as well yeah but yeah it is hard because your whole focus has been getting better and then you are better and you're like, oh shit, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, and mm. I didn't go back to my old, old job. I started a different career and I made a baking business. Like who you did. I made I wedding that. cakes. From- That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I think like that you need to know, we have a whole training now called the different, you know, knowing the difference between chronic fatigue syndrome tired and normal life tired. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's so important and, and you need to know the difference, you you know, like you, you know, and you you needed confirmation from your brother who was feeling the same way you were feeling because you're like, are you sure? And he's like, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm yawning. I need, I, just, I don't want to talk to anyone. And you go, oh, I'm, I'm normal yeah. after all. You know, this is normal tiredness. Well, you just reminded me. Yeah, I went, I went skiing again and mm. skiing is exhausting. Hard like, work, man. Those muscles, those leg muscles. <laughs> It is perfectly normal to fall asleep in your dinner at the end of a day skiing. Yeah, everyone's buggered in, uh, in the snow sl- slopes. Yeah. yeah. And it was actually, it was really interesting. I Sorry, that's my dog flapping her ears, if you can hear okay. that. Yeah. Um, so it was really important to me to go skiing again. And I remember I went up with my brothers. It's about a four-hour drive from home. So I went up with them and I wasn't going to ski. I just wanted to be in the mountains. Yeah. And I was stuffed from the drive. Like yeah. it was exhausting. And then the next year I went up and I was able to, I'd worked, it has been my goal for about six months working with Raya about getting my legs strong enough, yes. my mindset about it. And I went skiing, but I had visualized Tobes for all that time. 
the sound, I don't know if you know it, but the sound of clicking your ski, your boots into mm. your skis, it's kind of funk, click, you click into your bindings. And I had m- m- visualized it again and again and again. And the day I clicked in, I was like, yes. Wow. <laughs> but I only went out for two hours and a lift ticket in Australia for skiing is horrendously expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> but I was like, I'm just going but, for two hours. Two hours is huge, you know, but, you know, in relative yeah. terms can, from, from where you were freaking four years ago, you know. But that was how disciplined I was about it is I put an alarm on my phone and it went off two hours later and I went back into the lodge and the people I was skiing with, I can't believe you're going in. Like, it's yeah. so good. And, you know, yeah. and I was like, no. Nah. No, I'm happy. Yeah, and you've then, done it. Yeah. And I could go out the next day and then I went back the next year and I skied for the whole day. And, yeah. but yeah, I got really tired and I got a bit worried and uh, like, they were like, you, you're meant to be tired. You've skied all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So good. Far out. Absolutely amazing. What, what are you up to now? Like you started a baking, you know, you've gone, you've done a lot since you've, you know, since you've kind of come Well, out the baking here. business really was just to do something while I was getting better. It's yeah. something I could do from home. But I love this I'd because, again, mistakes. you were doing, you were building slowly and appropriately, you know, like you were integrating into life. You just, you know, it just didn't seem like it was like a big jump, which is a smart thing. Yeah, well, I, I made my friend's wedding cake and then other people heard about it and then I somehow made a business. It was quite bizarre. But oh. it was perfect. I could it do was. it at my own path. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to going to cook and then I'm going to go and sit down and then I'm going to make the icing and then I'm going to sit down and and you do it over days and I don't even take as many orders as I could. Mm. So I got to the point where I was doing like four wedding cakes a weekend and I was like, well, this is a That's lot. That's a lot. This is probably, I don't think I want to do this many, <laughs> but it wasn't about my body. It was Just like, work, yeah. Yeah. And then I was working, I worked for you guys for a little while. Doing yeah, yeah you, you were doing all the social media stuff, thank God. And, and because you're an editor... And my hand, mm. you know, my writing, not great. It's a lot, it's a lot better. You'd be proud, you know, 10 years later, we're, we're working. On it. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but I appreciate you being part of CFS Help and doing that work for us for sure. And then I worked for my dad's accounting business, which was That's pretty right. dry. It just gave me some admin stuff. But then I couldn't get a job, Tobes. It was so distressing to just, because I had this giant gap in my resume and and I lucked into the role, into the company I still work with now. I got a seven-week temp job as an office manager. That's right. And then got hired as the executive assistant to the CEO because they could see I could do a bit more than what I've been hired That's for. smart. Yeah. And then the role got bigger and bigger and then it became executive manager. And, yeah, I've been a right hand to a CEO for five years now. Absolutely And it's amazing. busy. And it's very cognitively demanding. It's big hours and I can do it. So, mm. and um, done lots of physical things. So when I got better, my mum and I went to France to celebrate the fact I was better. It was a mm. celebration of health. How good. And I was on a yoga, hiking and cooking retreat in France. And I That's climbed. That's right. I remember that. You did some cooking pastry and you were talk, telling yep. me about the, the flour, that how much better it is over there. <laughs> than it's in... yeah. 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 And, but yeah, then I, I got really into hiking after that trip because I sort of was reintroduced to hiking and I've done a couple of multi-day hikes since. So the video you saw of me, was me hiking the Milford Track in New Zealand. That's a 50k through hike up over mountains. And do you, how how on, how long? Did you, did you, was that a three day hike or was that? It's a four day. That's um, a long long you, way. And I did the the year before. I did the Great Ocean Walk in Victoria. That is 60k's. I think. Wow, unbelievable. Um, back up, and it was actually I was distinctly remember this, Toby. I was day three was so hard. Oh. <laughs> I was having you got a backpack on a... and everything, right? Like you've got yeah. everything on your back. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very hilly. And I was like, this is this is fucked. I hate this. <laughs> I was having this little little pity party. And I was I literally felt like I caught those words in my hands and was like, Oi, just have a oh. remember where we used to be. Like you're on the annual leave from your full time job. You're hiking. You drove here. From your house that you live in independently, like wow. come on. <laughs> yeah, you get to choose yeah. your hard now. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And I've gone skiing every year and 
I'd played netball again. I played touch footy. I regularly do yoga. Mm. Got a dog I walk twice a day, non negotiable. Yep. <laughs> um, Unbelievable. Yeah, I just I have a whole full life and mm. I I kind of doesn't even seem real now what I went through. Mm. Like it's it was so shit and mm. so awful and scary that it's quite hard to remember it. And I don't know if that's a trauma thing or a brain fog thing or or what, but it's quite mm. Well, it makes sense. You don't really, you know, like I said, a lot of people, we have so many people who get better. And we say, would you like to share your story? And they go, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I. Well, it's interesting you say that because I put a post up from New Zealand, the one you saw, and I went back to my old Instagram account I used to have for my blog. And I don't use it. I don't really go onto it, ever, except when I go and do cool stuff like that. Yeah. And so I did it. Whenever I've done something really physical, really challenging, I just make a point of going back and being like, recovery is possible. Yeah. Because the internet is full of stories saying it's not. Yeah. And it's so bleak and scary. And it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole and be like, oh, well, I'm just going to be like this forever, which I certainly did. So, yeah, it is really cool. But you asked me, I was like, yes, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. And and I. And I guess like you were, for you, it was kind of normal to put yourself out there because you were sharing your journey yeah. already, which was cool. And and I think also what you got out of that, the private group and that community in those years for you, I mean, one, you got a best, you know, you got a great friend for life and you mm-hmm. built some connections through that, which is, and it happens still now. It's so cool with people going, they catch up in person, they take photos together and all that. <clears throat> but also like the inspiration that you were able to get from other people, but then also the inspiration that you gave to other people in your journey. And I think that's something like a problem shared is a problem, but almost the opposite is true. When the, the when the progress is shared, the progress is far, you know, it drags you faster forwards, you know? Absolutely. Well, I had this amazing experience years after I stopped writing the blog, this email popped up in my inbox from like WordPress I was like, oh, what's that? And someone had commented on my, so it sent me an email actually. And they mm. were like, like, oh, I just, you don't know me, but I've just read your blog from Go to Woe. And I had to write to you and just tell you that how much it meant to me. It was like, it's you, like you were in my head. And people used to often say that to me, Toby. They'd be like, oh my God, I've just shown this to my mum or I've shown mm. this to my teacher or my boss. And it's like, you're in my head. And, and because I could write, that felt almost like, oh, it's going to sound a bit... Wanky, but I kind of felt like a privilege I had, like because I knew I could explain things well and yes. use words well. I kind of felt like I had the, that ability. I should use it. And yeah. I remember this woman mm-hmm. from Ireland. She emailed me, and I was just on the floor bawling afterwards. I was like, "That is exactly why I started that." Like yeah. that was just because I just wanted people to know that yeah, it was possible. Because I had three people in my life, Toby, who'd all got better. So my best friend from uni, my neighbor's mum and a friend from school's older brother had all had CFS and had all got better. So that was so important for me. I was like, until I met you guys, they were the only stories I had that you could get better. I was just like laser focus on Mm. on that. Mm. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you for doing your blog. You know, pretty, I'm getting tear, I'm getting emotional. But, you know, but I, I remember it was a big part of your journey. I still remember now, like when you used to post it, and yeah, it's cool. Like it's absolutely insane, and it's it's so that's great. But also, what's even greater is you just living your life, you know, by demonstration and and living it, and hiking, and just living fully. You know, being true to yourself. Well, even even yesterday, I was looking after my three year old nephew and. He's like a hurricane, and I was, but I was like, yeah, I'm chasing a child around a beach and throwing him in the air and doing all this <laughs> stuff. It just was so not possible ten years ago, and I have lots of those pinch me moments. But I also had like a wild ride the last year when I got COVID. Mm. I got COVID three times, and the first and second time, I thought I had long COVID. Mm. I was. Ed shitless, Toby. I was just like, oh no, 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 we're not, mm-hmm. we're not doing this again. I, I can't do this again. And both times at about the three month mark, I 
came good. Yeah. But the mental gymnastics to not go down the gurgler about yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know. But I also of, knew what to do. <laughs> you knew what to do. It's that, that's what I was going to say. Like, thank God, almost, in a way, mm. you went through what you went through early on because you have the tools and the frameworks to go and, you know, all right, I know what to do when I've, when I've got a virus or a flu or whatever it is. Yeah. And yeah, it's funny. We've had a lot of clients in you know, a similar situation where they're, they're getting better and then they got COVID and they freak out for about a day or two. And that's as much as we give them. And then we say, all right, <laughs> you know what to do. You follow the setback toolkit, do this, do that. And they're yeah. like, oh, thank you. know, I'm so glad I'm here and I've got these these teachings in front of me just to go and implement them when I need to. Yeah. Well, I even like, I, I had COVID just recently. And so I'm only walking two Ks a day with the dog mm. and she'd much prefer to go for longer walks, but I'm like, no, nope, this is what we do. And yeah. When but I also, a, yeah. Yeah. And I also think the thing that you guys told me, which has been invaluable is to advocate for myself. So mm. I did say to my boss, I'm working half days and he's great. He was like, okay. If I get you for half a day, that's better than nothing. Like, exactly. Yeah. But I probably didn't know how to do that before chronic fatigue. Yeah. I, I would have just. You would have pushed, pushed through, through and felt like crap, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Good on you. And that, that is. I think good. that was a, a big part of getting better. Was asking for what I needed, and I I had to ask my mum to drive me up to Melbourne to see you guys. That's Every right. When you first it. started at the, at the very start, when you first started your journey, you, you know, it was getting your family yeah. to support you every step of the way. And then it was about, and then it was mm-hmm. about letting them, letting them go off the support chain. So you could then do it yourself when yeah. you were able, when yeah. you were able to, obviously. Absolutely amazing. A couple of things before we wrap up, there's lots of people listening to this right now or watching this and they, they're just sitting there. They're going, I don't know what to do they're inspired they're they're hopeful you know it's been amazing like such a great story what message would you like to say to them oh that i get it it's it's fucking hard it's so so hard um but there is hope you can get better you're looking at two people right now who were very sick for a long time like i was mm. four and a half years i don't know how long you were about yeah, similar, about weren't you? A, yeah, similar. Yeah, but it feels it was two decades two decades ago now. So it's a, I forgot yeah. what even happened. But yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a quick thing. Like it so that yeah, you can get better, but it isn't it is a long journey to get yeah. better. There isn't a sort of quick overnight click in. So that was that's really hard to accept. That's gonna take for time. Um, mm. but you, it is possible and it is about progressive overload and finding a baseline and just slowly teaching your body that it can do things again, which sounds ludicrous when you don't understand that. That sounds really smart to me. Yeah. Simple. But once you get it, you're like, Oh, this is, this is what's happening. So yeah. Yeah. So I'd also say, I'm so sorry you're going through that. It's, it's so hard. And there are people out there who, fully understand it and i hope you find people who help you Mm -hmm. and yeah thanks for sharing that's it's it's this it's a good sound message you know and i think yeah people people often we overcomplicate something that doesn't need complication you know um because it can feel so overly complicated going through it but but what you've broken what you've said today in this interview is just such smart logical practical information you know and it's like you don't need more complexity on top of complexity like you need simplicity mm. um so the message yeah. is pure and strong for people who are either in our program right now who are on the journey and it's taking a bit longer than expected you know which is human we all want we all want it yesterday uh, or for people who are who are sitting on the fence and they want to get help with CFS help but they're not sure what would you say to those people Ooh, um, well, I really empathize. Like it is, it is the hardest thing I've ever been through. So it is hard. Um, for people who are feeling frustrated that it's not happening, I'd look for those little wins that, yeah, that I couldn't remember, but I certainly used to, yeah. I document what you're doing. That really helped for me to see, oh, okay, this is, there is progress. 
it's not as fast as I want, but there is. And that, that helps a lot. And for people who are feeling a bit scared to get help, I get that. Like I get that you've tried everything and you feel like, oh, what's the point? And there's no one who can help me. I really understand that. But for me, finding people who had had the illness was the difference for me because there's one thing to try and understand it from a textbook, but to have lived experience, that is just so different. So I'd say kind of take that leap of faith and just you know, hope that someone else can help you because there is life to live on the other side. I'm living it and so is Toby and, yeah, but I get I get the fear because I tried so much before I found you guys. So. Mm-hmm. Don't, let, don't let your past struggles ruin your future dreams, basically. Yeah, thank you. Sum that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Suze, so I appreciate you jumping on. It's been so, like I said, I was so looking forward to catching up with you. Yeah, and just just a recap of that website because I really, if it's still live, I would love for people to find those the articles that you wrote. Yeah, so if you just Google a snoozy s n double o z i e life, um, that's where my blog is. I copped some flack for that title because people were like, "Are you saying we're just tired?" I'm like, "No, yeah, it's, no, it's the my name, Susie." But okay. <laughs> Jesus. well there's good good quality content and i just i think it's just really cool that you you shared your journey and this particularly the grief article i think that's a real major one that might really help a lot of people right now mm. yeah and that it really that is a really hard part of the illness navigating but trying to stay positive and trying to yeah. look at the win but you also do need to acknowledge that what you're going through is really bloody hard and there's the feelings that need to come out yeah. Mm. Well done. <laughs> Thanks so much. Appreciate you. And on behalf You're of the very world, welcome. yeah, we we really do appreciate you spending this time to to do this. So thank you. Well, thank you for starting CFS Health because I don't know what I'd be doing if I hadn't stumbled across you guys on some English woman's blog. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, English woman. If you're listening to this, we thank you as well for connecting us, and then Susie helping yes. inspire thousands of other people as well. All right. Yeah. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Toad. Pleasure. Bye. My pleasure. Bye for now.